Good evening. Our reading is from 1 Timothy 3, verses 1 to 7. Here is a trustworthy saying. Whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Now the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family and see that his children obey him, and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders, so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. This is the word of the Lord. How has the year 2020 been for you? Many words can be used to answer that question, and it may depend on where you stood when the year began. But common words may be that you felt lonely, or redundant, furloughed, or struggling, insolvent, or maybe bereft. The word that best suits 2020 for me is unpredictable. Which one of us could have foreseen the impact a small virus in China could have on our lives. Today, I've been asked to talk on a theme. I am to pray for my church leaders and their families. Some years ago, I remember hearing a discussion along the lines of, if we believe that everyone in the body of church, of body of Christ is called to ministry, why should one group have to live by higher standards? I think that the demand for higher standards is legitimate and necessary for the leadership of the church. This is not to say that the same standards should not be held as the ideal for every believer. But leadership must always have its special demands for at least two reasons. First, leadership is the, of, in the church is voluntary. The church doesn't draft its leaders. An individual may be urged and encouraged to seek ordination to a leadership position, but he or she can never be required to do so. And the ordination vows of every church I know involves a commitment in some form or another to live an exemplary life. Everyone who accepts a role of leadership in the church voluntarily accepts the standards attached to that office. The second reason has to do with organisational dynamics. Every organisation must have some people who are willing to make extra efforts and special sacrifices for the good of the whole. It would be magnificent if everyone in a given church were to accept the highest standards and live by them, but the reality is that a small percentage of the people carry the bulk of the load. And the fact that those few take the vows and hold the banner high provides hope and direction for the many. A vital church must have leaders who are willing to accept the highest standards and by the grace of God strive to live by them. Conversely, there's always the danger of spiritual pride. How tragic when leaders start thinking of themselves as better than others. In Christ, we are what we are by God's grace and mercy, and pride has no place. Paul's admonition must ever be before us. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Galatians 5.26 Verse 7 of our text says he must also have a good reputation with outsiders 
so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. We, our church leaders, need balance. And I particularly want to spend time opening this up. The priority of every leader in the church is firstly to spend time with the Lord for him or herself. No leader in the church is the finished acts of God. And just like you and I, we read from Jeremiah 29 that God has plans for each one of us. Secondly, our leader is urged to pray for their spouse. And in the case of a man, he is commissioned also to lead his wife. In verse 2, he is called to be faithful towards her. Being faithful includes taking her to the Lord and helping her to grow. The third charge upon our leader is to pray for his or her children and to lead them. Verses 4 and 5, he must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him. And he must do so in a manner, manner worthy of full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? So an appointed leader has much to do before he or she takes up the role in the church. And there are many ways we can be supporting these people. When it comes to leading our church, the leader must be, in verse 2, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach. In the first four qualities there, they are all ones that help befriend people and essential. But everyone has difficulties to contend with. Maybe our church leaders have difficulties within their family or friendships or amongst members of their church family. And we all have good days and bad days. Days where we're feeling poorly, concerned about someone close, days where we may have to share bad news, and we need more of God's grace. And then our leader, it says, must be able to teach. I praise God for the quality of teaching we have amongst our leaders. But good teaching needs time with God in setting up. More prayer support for these leaders is vital. And our leaders have family. We must allow them time to be, with the, to be the people God wants them to be within their own families. Often people work too many hours and children suffer. But Lord, we want sensible balance that more of our members can take over roles that free our leaders to be the people that you want them to be. This year has been unpredictable. What is James still trying to handle before 2021. Uniquely this year, he's been carrying the load of combining weekly newsletters with songs to make your heart sing, and still somehow he's got to work out a way in which we can put together church services over the Christmas period. Is our church going to be open, closed? Are we going to be using Zoom? Lord, we need to know the answers to these problems and we need to be able to support James in this. This week he's had a new PCC team come together. And Lord, we just thank you for those people that have been part of that team, some of them for the first time ever. And we need, Lord, for you to take charge of these people and help them to be the people that you are calling them to be. So in so many ways, we need to be taking our own time, independently and together, to bring our church leaders towards God. Can I ask you, in the rest of this year particularly, to take time out and be praying for those leaders, for each member of the staff team and each member of the PCC, that by the time 2021 arrives, we were in a better position than we were at the start of 2020. Let me just pray for you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the leaders that we have. We thank you for the way in which they are open to sharing Jesus with us at all times. 
And we ask, Lord, that you will reach into each one of those people and equip them more and more day by day, day to be the people that you are calling them to be. Lord, as we lift them up to you, we pray for our church membership that they may grow in the time ahead of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.